Rescue team, not assassins. Now, what we gotta do? In a part of the world where there are no rules. We pick up their trailer at the chopper, run them down, grab those hostages before anybody knows we were there. What do you mean we? Deep in the jungle, where nothing that lives is safe. You lose it here, you're in a world of hurt. It's showtime, kid. Welcome back, Space Cadets, into our live review of a fan favorite of Gramps uh, and Octopus and I. <laughs> well, yeah, we'll remember. Uh, I gotta remember. It's been a long day here in the office. Um, but uh, we're bringing you a Predator 1987 uh, film review. Uh, one of our favorites. Uh, we just watched it recently again. Um, and so, kind of segue to uh, Octopus a little bit to talk about um, kind of the history of the film, and then uh, we'll kind of bring you more of our thoughts. Yeah. So you know, this this film was kind of first of its kind, first of its nature. You know, it was. It kind of launched, you know, this the sci-fi genre in a different direction, mm -hmm. if you know what I'm saying, with kind of the concept of not just being a space creature, like an alien, kind of like what we've seen in uh, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, where, you know, the aliens are more friendly uh, to this creature that is more powerful than humans itself. And I think that was very unique for this time, because we've only really, like in Star Trek, seen you know, a bunch of alien creatures that interact with humans. Uh, Star Wars, same same deal. Uh, humans always seem to come out on top no matter what, or else aliens were kind of friends with them. But in this scenario, you know, we kind of get uh, a new take uh, of a, like a super, super being uh, overpowered alien type deal. Yeah, and I think, you know, this 1987, so rated R film, Predator, um, you know, science fiction thriller, you know, kind of... Uh, a mix of science fiction and action, you know, which again, like as you said, kind of you know, not necessarily like both overtly kind of in a genre and movie at once, and so it kind of a really neat journey that John McTiernan, the director, takes us on. And you know, I think you know, kind of the the neat thing with it is that, like again, the premise, you know, not going too much into the story, you know, I would definitely say uh, a movie to check out and kind of see the, all the different iterations along the way. But this original uh, version of Predator, you know, really you know takes these great hunters um, and they become the hunted. Yeah. And so I kind of think it's a neat, you know, kind of a neat story journey that you know we take um, as the audience, you know, with some of the most iconic actors um, and kind of macho men, you may say, mm -hmm. in Hollywood, yeah. kind of, you know, taking the first step into a, a great uh, science fiction thriller. Mm -hmm. And I, I do think, like, that premise, the premise that this, um, this movie, uh, I don't want to say it, this movie creates for future films kind of shows, because we see in a lot of um, movies afterwards, like uh, Alien, mm -hmm. you know, uh, is Alien before or after? It's after, right? No, it'd be before. It'd be before. Yep, I think it was 1979 Alien came out. So, I think, like, Alien... I know Alien 2 and Alien 3 don't follow the same thing, but you kind of see how they kind of have, like, more more, more weapons, uh, bigger bigger men, I believe. Yeah, yeah, like, I, Aliens, I directed that, by James Cameron, kind of takes on that, like, almost Marine mentality of yeah. what the first one was. The first one was definitely science fiction, you know, based the mystery, you know, um, where um, Aliens, the second iteration of that, definitely became much more of an action film yeah. than science fiction. And I think, but it was emerging. Yeah, and I think, like, just Predator all around just kind of propelled this science fiction slash action movie. Mm. You know, because we had never really seen it before in, like, the sci-fi realm. It's more of a what-if thing. Uh, you know, you saw it a little bit with Star Wars, but, like, a lot of that was, um, you know, like, a lot of it was kind of like playing on your, like medieval, you know, sword slashing yeah, imagination. That's true. Yeah. You know, you know, not like explosion here, explosion there. You know, that kind of thing. So I think it just, and we see a lot of movies these days that, like, have that sci sci science fiction um, action uh, meld now, and I think yeah. Predator is a good example of why that became so prevalent. 
Well, I think that's kind of a nice segue into like our kind of section section of this uh, film review and kind of the impact that Predator had on the film industry and kind of movies, you know, forthcoming. Knock, knock, knock. An elite rescue squad. You're bleeding, man. I ain't got time to bleed. <laughs> is being led by the ultimate warrior. We need the best. That's why you're here. But now... What's got Billy so spooked? There's something out there waiting for us. And it ain't no man. They're up against the ultimate enemy. Holy mother of God. So a lot of the films that we've reviewed so far on our channel, you know, from 2001 Space Odyssey to Blade Runner 2049 that we just did um, a couple weeks ago, um, again, really, you know, cult classics, science fiction thrillers, uh, great masterpieces in science fiction. Um, you know, 2001 Stanley Kubrick's vision with that, you know, definitely, you know, so much that's immersed into pop culture from that, from, uh, you know, the musical score, the, the impact of classical within cinema, you know, from Howe's, you know, uh, lines, the journey of that story, um, kind of the, the monolith and what that means and just the iconicism in that film. You know, to Blade Runner, the first iteration of that, um, to even Blade Runner 2049, you know, where you're just kind of seeing the kind of an evolution expansion of uh, science fiction. Yeah. And for Predator, again, kind of that, you know, delving into not only science fiction but thriller action, you know, to me one of the things that I kept always saying to Octopus, you know, was that, you know, everyone talks about the Expendables and that concept of like a ultra movie cast, you know, macho men, macho women, you know, just kind of these icons in the film industry, um, bodybuilding, you know, what have you. Uh, this was really the first iteration of that. You know, you had Arnold Schwarzenegger at his peak as Dutch. You had Carl Weathers, you know, with the Rocky movies and as Apollo Creed. You know, you had Jesse Ventura, who also would become a governor and, you know, and all of that, you know, from yeah. you know, pro wrestling. You know, so you had all these iconic um, actors, you know, just at their peaks in their career, not only physically and the physicality of who they were as actors, um, but and also just on a whole other level, you know, kind of bringing that team concept, you know, to really fruition that... Um, one, you know, there were expendables in this film because they came in to do a specific thing, but, you know, the loss of life didn't really matter to these guys or to the people using them. You know, and so really that concept didn't really start with the expendables, but I would say, and I would challenge anyone, you know, that it started with Predator. Yeah. I mean, that's... I, I would say that is pretty pretty accurate. You know, it was, in its time, unique. You know, it's mm -hmm. like, we've never seen a movie like it. Yeah, and I think that's one of the reasons why, you know, it, it's, it kind of is like you know that cult classic, you know, we we always, I mean, the last one, uh, last few movie reviews that we done have been like in that cult classic, yeah, most uh, of range, you know, and I remember just my first experience with watching Predator was actually the the ending of it on um, the Sci-Fi Channel, you know, it's like oh, I yeah. didn't I didn't have it like on a VCR, I didn't have it on DVD, nobody yeah. told me, it's like. It's like you have to go out and find it, like you know. And I feel like a lot of movies that have like that cult classic uh, aroma to it, like you have to go and find it yourself. Yeah. And like nobody's gonna tell you otherwise. But on top of on top of that, you know, that's why it, like I feel like it's not known for what it it, it did, mm -hmm. you know. And I think this is gonna be a good, a good segue into uh, the triggering part uh, because. I feel one of the gripes that I've actually had with this is the the lack of story in it. Nothing like it has ever been on Earth before. She says the jungle just came alive and took him. We cannot see it. No blood, no bodies. We hit nothing. But it sees the heat of our bodies and the heat of our fear. Whatever it is out there, it killed Hopper. And now it wants us. It kills for pleasure. Ah! He will skin the lion. It hunts for sport. He's killing us one at a time. So there is like a lack of story, um, especially in the first half uh, of the movie. That particularly, I don't, I don't like because like with the uniqueness of this hunter, this predator um, creature that's more intelligent than the man. You know, like the concept itself is fantastic. <laughs> You know, there's a lot of stories that I remember reading where man was being hunted and it intrigues you because we don't, we as humans don't think about being hunted ever. And so, like, this is a very intriguing story. However, the 
build up to get to where the predator or hunter reveals itself is very very long and I can see where um, if somebody new watching this saw the first half like if I didn't see the the, the, the later half mm -hmm. I would have never have known what what it was about and I probably would have lost interest in it I would have mm -hmm. probably just changed the channel but like it's just like Arnold you know Jesse great like you know great uh, actors great, they're funny and stuff but I just think it comes up the story building aspect comes up a little bit dry you know it's like why are they in the forest you know it's yeah. kind of like a why are they in the jungle and it's kind of a they kind of bounce their way around on the reason mm -hmm. kind of just to you know get in those explosions when they're yeah. going to the camp um, you know you find the dead bodies but like you would you, you kind of get the gist that uh, something uh, very strong, very powerful, uh, did that to them, but, like, they just spend so little time focusing on, uh, that aspect, and they go right into shooting up the camp. I just feel like if they had kind of a unique, unique, uniqueer story surrounding, like, the Predator, and maybe, like, if they found, I know his ship was, you know, I think camouflage, yeah. Yeah. Even though it was like camouflage and stuff, you know, it's like um, maybe like they found that, you know, and then that can springboard into mm -hmm. maybe introducing the predator character a little bit earlier, so you know you have uh, more action with the predator. Maybe having one of the character, you know, you know how like the characters just die yep. uh, very quickly. Maybe have a pr there's only I think two prolonged scenes that shows the hu. Uh, humans actually trying to fight the predator. What if every single macho man had his own uh, kind of brawl mm. with with the predator? You know, th <coughs> that would be like maybe like a ten minute, ten minute, maybe seven minute, seven to ten minute scene of just uh, so, uh, going out man by man and just seeing how he knocks them out. You know, after like this big battle and just coming out over top overall until you get to, you know, the Arnold character Dutch. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that would have been a lot more enticing. But the story is fine. I just think it could have been implemented. Mm -hmm. We're all going to die. But this time, it's picked the wrong man to hunt. If it bleeds, we can kill it. So the story, uh, you know, that I kind of want to touch on for the true game was kind of almost how the, the film almost stopped when they started actually, like, bringing in the monster that they created. Mm -hmm. Like, the the initial design was not that good. Um, and, you know, it kind of, I think, would have flopped and not been what it is today if it wasn't for bringing Stan Winston into mm -hmm. the, um, kind of the, the monster movie magic, you know, genius, to bring him into the, kind of, the fold of the film. And interesting enough, like, he was coming up with this alien creature that we see today, you know, but I think on a flight that he was taking, uh, James Cameron was with him, James Cameron said, oh, like, it'd always be cool to see, like, a monster with, you know, mandibles, you know, for, like, the mouth and everything, and so initially just from that conversation so many pieces of like the film industry and film history are just these like one-off conversations that impact you know from Attica you know being added to you know Dog the Afternoon by you know an AD saying hey like she's talking about this like prison like you know revolution that just happened came into the film is now one of like one of the best quotes of all time in film history you know and so this conversation just with Stan Winston really created um you know, from James Cameron, maybe just his off, you know, the handcuff of, like, adding mandibles that became the predator monster and creature that, you know, people uh, have emblazoned in their mind as an icon of this film. But then also, you know, from this to Predator 2 to Predators, you know, to Predator vs. Alien, like, that, you know, film image is ingrained just because of that one conversation on the flight. Yeah. And so it's kind of a really neat, like... Um, triggering kind of urge the thing where it's like almost like failed the film but then like there was that kind of triumph or return to you know bringing Stan Winston in the fold to really make it what it was mm -hmm. yeah. um, kind of segueing into our, our last you know the story piece of it um, we're going to talk about our favorite scenes and kind of see, break down the film in that last regard as before we send you off uh, back into outer space then space guys yeah if you don't want any spoilers I would turn off now <laughs> 
Century Fox presents Arnold Schwarzenegger. Predator. The hunt begins Friday, June 12th at theaters everywhere. So as we kind of wrap up our uh, review of Predator 1987, we're going to talk about our favorite scenes. Mm -hmm. uh, so to kind of kick us off, uh, before we segue into Joe's um, favorite scene, my favorite scene in, you know, um, Octopus really, you know, netted on the head before we were doing the, you know, um, review before we started it. You know, it was like, what well, my favorite scene was going to be, he nailed it, and it's, you know, kind of the iconic, you know, scene that's in the documentary that's connected with Predator. It's also um, right at the beginning of the film, you know, where Carl Weathers um, and Arnold Schwarzenegger's characters, you know, rejoin again for the first time from their military background and days, and they just come on the screen and they do the, you son of a bitch, you know, and you see the, um, you know, you <laughs> really muscles. see the, yeah, the musculature, oh. the physicality of the actors, like, literally just taking the entire screen, you know, their biceps, everything about them, just, you know, uh, it really sets up the stage that, like, these guys are, you know, the men of men, you know, and really sets the tone that, like, okay, Nothing. This monster, you know, may be like badass, but these guys are also badass. And you have the ultimate hunter and predator facing, you know, I would say the ultimate human hunter in Arnold Schwarzenegger, aka Dutch in the film. Mm -hmm. I mean, that I, I I predicted that it's a it's a great scene. It, <laughs> it really, it, I mean, even though it's in the beginning, it does capitalize on the fact that it is the un ultimate human versus the ultimate hunter. Yeah, and like that, that there is a difference. There is a level. Yep. Um, but that that's a good scene. So, I guess my favorite scene has to be the probably one of the most iconic moments in the film, uh, which is when the predator takes off his mask. You know, um, oh, yeah. uh, right at the end of the yeah. movie, you're you, you ex you're ex you're not really expecting it. You know, and they I don't th they did not have to do it at all. No, that's they, true. They 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 included it, and it, it definitely does it, it works very well. It, like what you're talking about with like just the creation of yeah. the the predator itself, the face where you, he has like the mouth with the the mandibles coming yeah. out at it, and the screech and the it's so I think one of the reasons why it's so good is that the predator's a human humanoid uh, creature, yeah, so he's yeah, like yeah. a yeah. human, and so you know he comes down on like he's kind of crouched, you know, not too crouched, you know, and like reaches out his his hands, his claws, yeah, and you know, and does, does the screech, oh, yeah. the screech, yeah. and, you know, it's, it's, uh, nerve-wracking, the first thing yeah. you see, and you're like, well, uh, Dutch is about to yeah. get killed, you know, and, um, just, I feel like that is so pivotal in a lot of movies, it kind of is the determining factor in a lot of the science fiction movies, do you get to see the alien, or do you not get to see, see the, the alien, alien. Yeah. and yeah. I think... It is just doing the audience like good fan service if you show them like a creature behind the mask. Yeah, you know, and we we've seen it um, in Alien. You know, yeah, yep. the it with very yeah. limited uh, screen time as well. Mm -hmm. You know, very limited, and that we get this, the icon. Yeah, and you get to see this creature, and then you you identify with it. Yeah, you know, and I just think that is such a pivotal point for the movie itself and why it like stays in your mind is because you get that visual image that uh, they honestly didn't have to put in and I'm just glad they went the extra mile to make the Predator as cool slash hideous looking as they possibly could uh, terrifying as they could and let us get the, the full picture yeah and, and I think, you know, just kind of going off of that, you know, you mentioned a couple other films like in this journey so far, mm -hmm. you know, I would say that like um, this is going to kind of wrap it up for the Predator, you know, uh, live review with uh, Gramps and Octopus. And I would say that, you know, uh, really we want to kind of our users to kind of maybe pick maybe the next film that we do. Obviously, you know, I would say, you know, we're the Outer Space Gamers, you know, so... We love sci-fi. Love, love sci-fi, love, sci love space and everything. And so, you know, to the films <laughs> that we've talked about, you know, um, there's a piece of it in our uh, Outer Space Gamers intro, you know, that's from uh, a remix of a, a, the Close Encounters of the Third Kind theme, you know, and so I guess I want to put this out there to the two of us, but then also to our users to really comment on this review and say, do you want us to review Close Encounters of the Third Kind, so a throwback Steven Spielberg film, or uh, a newer science fiction film that also um, is incredibly powerful, just as much as the films we've done so far, uh, with Interstellar by Christopher Nolan. And so um, I would say that 
both of those films are going to probably, film reviews will come out from this channel, but I would say we're going to turn it back to our viewers and say, you know, pick Interstellar or Close Encounters of, which, well, of what you want to see next, and then we will do that up for you. Yeah. I mean, sci-fi, I feel like, is one of the coolest uh, genres to talk about just because, it, like, the possibilities are endless. Yeah. Really, and it just, they're, I just love them. That's just, a, I guess that's just a personal thing. Um, but yeah, that's really all we have to say about this movie. So if you liked our review, uh, remember to like, comment on this video, comment on uh, other movies you might like to see, and also remember to subscribe to the channel, because that would help a ton. Um, and hopefully, uh, we'll see you in the next one. Over and out, Space Cadets. See you next time, Space Cadets. Over and out.